What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and a stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below as it's completely free to do so. And remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also, thanks so much for hitting the like button for us down below. Let's talk about the possibility of getting a $1,400 to $2,000 stimulus check as a fourth stimulus check for everybody. And also, let's talk about stimulus checks on the state level that are already passed. And we'll kind of uh, correlate this on how this could or what is being done here um, by governors and what Congress on the federal level is considering right now here for everybody, for everybody, because uh, this kind of shows us what lawmakers and what governors are thinking right now and what could happen and what is happening right now. And this is going to also kind of show here uh, who is going to be receiving texts here in the near future. Uh, yeah, we look at uh, things like this here. New, the state of New Mexico just passed uh, $500 to $1,000 stimulus checks for the state of New Mexico residents. This is official. This is officially passed. Um, uh, these stimulus checks are going to be going out here soon. And uh, this is just one of these stimulus checks here on the state level. And uh, there's a lot of different states doing checks like this, also sending the message to federal lawmakers that uh, they're going to have to step up their game and sending messages like this that, uh, you know, it's an election year and, um, you know, <laughs> you better uh, get the job done. And as a lot of uh, state legislatures and governors are doing this right now. This You can literally see this passed here on April 8th, just a few days ago. Uh, you know, a lot of states are um, in the process of voting on this or considering this. They have new bills on this. If you've been watching my channel regularly, you know, I'm keeping you up to date here on all these different states uh, that are kind of in the process of doing this, which is a lot. You could see here over the following couple of months, most New Mexicans bank accounts will see a deposit of $500 to $1,500. The state governments of New Mexico's uh, stimulus checks comes after lawmakers in New Mexico's just authorized two different stimulus check packages this year. Let's write two of them. Uh, despite record oil prices, uh, and growing living costs, notably high gas prices. Some of the funds come from a measure voted on by parliamentarians back in February 2022. That was the first one during a normal legislative session. And now here on April 5th, 2022, lawmakers passed a second package after convening in Santa Fe for a one-day extraordinary legislative session. Yeah, so bravo to this state, right? Uh, a total of $1,000 will be awarded to a head of households, surviving spouses, and married couples submitting joint returns. Individual filers who are not head of households, uh, just single filers that, again, not a head of households, and married couples filing separate returns will, or just single filers, will each receive $500 stimulus checks each. Each. The stimulus checks will be split into two. Into two. Those funds will be split into two portions once again and will go out as soon as feasible. Again, this just kind of passed here. I think it's going to the governor. I'm not sure if the governor signed it yet. Uh, the governor said that, that she is expected to sign it. Uh, the act it specifies that it must be delivered no later than June 30th, 2022. The initial payment will be $500 for joint filers and $250 for single filers. Next up, we have the state of Alaska who just uh, looks like just 
here recently, a, the Alaska House of Representatives approved a major increase in state spending and included $2,600 payments to Alaskans from the house, their state House of Representatives and now has to be voted on in the Senate. Again, $2,600 payments in the state of Alaska. So you kind of see here, again, it has to be voted on in the Senate, but you can see here a lot of states are passing big checks here uh, to kind of give back money in their states as well. You can see here the Alaska House of Representatives voted Saturday to turn an oil price surge into money for K-12 schools, tax credit for oil drillers, and $2,600 payments for Alaska residents. Wow, that's a nice amount. So uh, for married couples, that would be $5,200 for, you know, this $2,600 per person. So yeah, that's a nice chunk of change. Uh, but again, it has to go to the Senate as well, uh, as the House has passed it and the Senate has to pass it now as well. So we'll see what happens here. And of course, the largest state in the country, California, wants to give $800 to families as well, uh, $400 per person, $800 per families for uh, stimulus checks as well here this year. Last year, they gave out $600 per person or $1,100 if you had a child as well, an extra $500 in stimulus checks. They're going to give out some type of stimulus check here again this year as well. Uh, as they said, they have a $45 billion surplus. And there's a lot of different states here, even New York, considering stimulus checks of $250 per person or $500 for a married couple. And the state of Illinois now considering stimulus checks and tax rebate checks for homeowners, which could add up to, I think it's $600 for a typical family of four uh, that owns a home as well. So multiple different states doing this here across the country. But on the federal level as well, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, leader of the Democrats in the House, she's temporarily out with uh, the virus. She has tested positive, but I mean... I don't think she's going to die. Um, you know, I mean, she's currently said that she's not even experiencing symptoms, but I mean, I'll keep you up to date here on that. Um, but uh, she said that uh, direct, her direct quote is, is that they are considering direct payments to the people here because of the cost of inflation. She actually said it would be better than a national gas tax holiday because it uh, doesn't send money back to the gas companies. And we know that Nancy Pelosi has always been a proponent for stimulus checks. And um, especially because it's an election year and uh, she's up for re-election here. The entire House of Representatives is up for re-election. And about one third of the Senate is up for re-election here this year. And this could be Nancy Pelosi's last uh, year for re-election. Uh, she did say she's running for re-election again. And the Democrats want to try to hold the House and Senate or as much as they can. The possibility for a $1,400 or $2,000 stimulus check is probably very pretty high. Uh, especially look at what all these states are doing, literally passing thousand dollar stimulus checks. Uh, Alaska just passed a twenty six hundred dollar stimulus check, uh, at least in their House of Representatives. Uh, it is passed there. It does have to still go to their Senate, but it is at least partially passed. California has their governor has said they're going to pass some type of stimulus check this year, uh, as well as they did last year, which was anywhere from six hundred dollars to eleven hundred dollars per person, uh, making under seventy five thousand dollars and filed the state uh, tax return, so they knew how much money you made. Uh, but if you kind of look at all these different states that are doing something, and um, 
the federal government hasn't passed a stimulus check since last year. And the child tax credits are now expired as well um, since last year as well. So those are not going out here this year as well. Now, you got to kind of think that there's a lot that needs to be done. And you got to think there's 60 million children uh, and it's like 40 oh, some million families that are now no longer getting those monthly payments for the child tax credits. So that's a lot of disappointed voters. So you got the child tax credits, you got the student, and you got to think that the student loan payments have just been um, repaused. Those payments have just been repaused, and uh, only till August. And if you just kind of think that through, it's almost surely that those will probably be repaused again. Uh, those were paused for four months, and. Uh, August, September, October, November, December. My guess is, is those will be paused again for four more months until the end of the year, which would take us right past the elections and would go until the end of the year and probably restart again in January. Just if I'm kind of just predicting, just kind of guessing here would probably be the most likely uh, thing. So they would probably restart uh, in January 1st, if I'm just guesstimating, uh, is that President Biden would probably extend those one more time. This would take us past the elections. Uh, remember that former President Donald Trump is the person who first uh, paused those student loan payments. Uh, and, then, and then they'd probably be re-extended one more time would be my guess. Because it's just a lot of, lot at stake right now. We have you know, the pandemic. We have inflation. And we also have an election year, you know, and there's 64% of people who uh, are behind and can't pay their bills. And you got to kind of think the student loans, a lot of people, the average payment is $400 per month. And then you got to kind of think of the child tax credits are not going out right now. I think they're going to probably find a way to pass those this year. And I think they're going to probably try to find a way to pass a, a large stimulus check this year as well. Now, remember, the Democrats do not really need any Republican votes this year at all. They can pass it through the reconciliation package. That is exactly how they did it last time, that $1,400 stimulus check. Some people forget this or, or don't realize this, but the Democrats passed this completely under it was the first package underneath President Biden. They did this with Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema without any Republican votes at all. So they can do this completely without a single Republican vote. And uh, that's probably how they would do this, because I don't know if any Republicans would, would vote for a stimulus check now, especially before the election. So um, that is how they can do this here. Uh, the child tax credits could be passed with uh, Republicans, but it remains to be seen. But let me know your thoughts here on this. I will keep you up to date. Also, I wanted to tell you about something really interesting. Big systemic trends are changing the investing game as we know it. Adapt or get left behind. These are your choices as consumer preferences are impacting businesses across all market segments. The mounting urgency of climate crisis, accelerating regulatory requirements of the food industry, as well as world government's increasing emphasis on sustainability has created an opportunity for us to potentially make a boatload as this is the early stages, as you must know about this disruptive stock that is up 36% in five days already. We have no choice but to acknowledge the unavoidable force of ESG, environmental, social, and governance factors. Resisting ESG will only hurt your portfolio's returns over the long run. You'll only end up fighting against the government, not a battle you really want to fight. Remember, on day one in office, the Biden administration took steps to rejoin the Paris Agreement on climate change and pledged to set the U.S. on path to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. 
with an interim target of decarbonizing the U.S. power sector by 2035. Meanwhile, China, which represents nearly 30% of global CO2 emissions, committed to halt its rise in carbon emissions before 2030, becoming carbon neutral by 2060. In fact, projections show that ESG investments could become a $1 trillion category by 2030. The data shows that ESG funds are on track for a record year of inflows, $5.4 billion in inflows for ESG funds in 2018, $21.4 billion accrued in 2019, $51 billion for 2020, and $21 billion in just the first quarter of 2021. Moreover, compared to traditional investment strategies, we've already witnessed ESG investing outperformance. Knowing that an emphasis on ESG will empower you to pursue better risk-adjusted returns, it's time to handpick the businesses that will lead the way and which offer ground floor opportunities. At the center of multiple high conviction trends, not only ESG investments, but also plant-based food trends that are sweeping North America today is a Canadian startup known as Billy Goat Brands, U.S. stock symbol BGTTF. Chairman and CEO Tony Harris's vision for Billy Goat Brands is to bring something different to the dinner table sustainable plant-based food products. But Billy Goat Brands doesn't have to grow and cook the food themselves. Instead, Harris is developing a venture capital company to provide the expertise needed to develop the most forward-thinking, up-and-coming ESG-centered businesses. CEO Tony Harris is pretty much poised to become a name that investors will remember, kind of like the Warren Buffett of ESG investing and plant-based foods. While Billy Goat Brands could become this niche market's version of Berkshire Hathaway. And this isn't Tony Harris's first rodeo. Actually, like me, he has over 20 years of experience as an investor and an entrepreneur. And he's also an award-winning automotive dealer and a real estate developer. And he has earned a reputation for leading high-performance teams. Mr. Harris identified three value-added ESG-compliant brands for Billy Goat's portfolio. So far, with room for expansion in the near future. These include Fun Guys Beverages is a manufacturer and distributor of organic, organic Shaga and Lion's Mane infused cold brew coffee products under its cold brand. Fun Guys has bottling partnerships with TerraCycle and Loop and aims to capture a portion of the roughly $23 billion U.S. functional mushroom market while creating the most sustainable coffee ritual for its consumers to achieve and repeat use and consumption. Next up is the Sophie's Kitchen brand, a Nevada-based manufacturer and distributor of a disruptive plant-based seafood alternative that enables customers to eat plant-based without giving up the flavors they love. Currently, Billy Goat's Brands has the rights to acquire up to an approximately 46% equity interest in Sophie's Kitchen upon funding and conversion of a credit facility, as well as the exercise of a subscription rights granted to Billy Goat's Brands. And third is the Vegetarian Butcher. Pretty cool, huh? A plant-based protein retail grocer with two operating locations in Kelowna and Vancouver, Canada. Both stores generated positive cash flow within two months of opening. The Vegetarian Butcher also recently launched an online platform of e-commerce business to include mail order and delivery. 
and has plans to open five different locations by the end of 2021 around British Columbia and also has a plans to open five locations by the end of 2021 around British Columbia and 36 locations over the next three years. What we're witnessing is the emergence of a highly specific yet fully diversified venture capital business. It's a terrific investment in ESG today, three great companies in one, and with all the unbelievable blue sky potential. So thanks to Billy Goat Brands, our sponsor for today. Make sure to check out their stock, which is U.S. stock symbol BGTTF. Make sure to do your due diligence on them as well. As always, I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country, money, investing, the stock market, stimulus check update, and everything you need to know about on a daily basis. Make sure to subscribe down below. If you haven't yet, it's completely free to do so. You can click here to watch my newest video next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.